Right, I'm going to get a lot of questions, so I figured I would make a video for reference for you guys who are trying to figure out how to fix rust. And this will help a lot of you guys um, who have questions or, or actually who um, are skeptics about whether the stuff that I do works. And, you know, I, I've been fixing rust for, from since the 90s. And, uh, you know, I've been pretty successful with the stuff I've done. Um, none of my cars have ever rusted again. Um, but one of the good reasons that is, is because, see this room here? Uh, they're kept inside. And I want to suggest to all of you to do the same thing. I don't care how you fix your rust. If you leave it outside, it will probably reoccur again. So two things you need to know is... How does rust occur? And then how, and the other thing is, is how was the vehicle created? When Volkswagens were built, um, the whole thing was pinch welded together. Pinch welds are not like these types of welds where we're doing for repair, but they were welds where a big machine pinched and then heated it up, like all the floors here and all that were all heated up and then to red hot and then that and then it went to the next one heat it up till red hot and and then what it does is it kind of fuses the metal together um, using the existing metal instead of filler rod which when you, when you weld with a welder you know, the little rod that comes out that's filler rod so when they were created see this right here from Volkswagen they dipped the entire car in a solution to stop the to chemically uh, uh, remove some of the, uh, the, the the there's actually the oil that's on the car when they when they ship the the products out they usually have some shipping oil on them to keep them from rusting and uh, also stop that from rusting and then what they did is they dip in, the, in another thing that that had uh, like a solution on it, almost like a primer, and that uh, protected everything. It's kind of really, really, it was really, really thin in order to be able to dip it down and have it do an effective job. You can't have a really thick pr product. Let me just break it out of the way. You guys can see. Um, they had a really, really thin product that they put on there that actually got in between as many of the pinch welds as possible. And... Uh, and you can see that. You can see the cars coming out of that. Um, and then that product was done. Uh, and then the car was just, uh, painted and assembled and put on a lot for sale. And even with doing that, when they dipped it, it still um, got rust. Some places where rust, you wonder how the hell did it ever get there? Because that was a really thin product. It was on there, and you are never, ever, ever, ever going to replicate that. Not unless you have a 40,000 gallon vat and, you know, about, you know, a ton of money in material to dip your car in. You're just not going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. So, even the best rustic guy, even the guy who butt welds everything together and does everything at the seam and does everything quote unquote right it is not right it is a repair you are doing a repair when you're doing rust you're doing a repair i don't care if you use weld through primer i don't care if you use all those things that they they sell the salesmen sell their wares okay if you watch some of my videos on that um i think it's just it's a salesman thing you know these these companies are making money selling you products to make you think that you're going to replicate that and you will not so i'm just letting you know there is no way to say a hundred percent of the time that you're gonna you know get rid of the rust forever the best way to do that keep the car inside don't drive it in the winter that's why i always say to people daily driver old car not a good idea leave it for fair weather days drive it then better for the car all right so that's what i always say so you guys aren't going to like that, but that's just honest, you know, that's the, 
That's the naked truth. That's the way it is. Okay? So, what can you do to get as close as you can? And, you know, some guys will use the web through primer. And my theory on that is this. If you use well through primer, it's... There, there's two things that accelerate uh, rust, okay? And, and we're going to talk about how the rust occurs so that you can understand how you can think your way through your repair to get the rust not to come back. Two things that accelerate rust. Heat accelerates rust. So when you weld something, uh, that metal is more open. Or actually, there's three things. Sandblasting. As soon as you sandblast everything and you take everything off that metal, that sucker is just... The rust just is coming. It is coming. So I don't like the sandblast um, because of that reason. And it's because of the, faci the facility I'm in. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. I'm not saying that don't do it. I'm saying that if you have a facility to where you can have the car completely inside dry, you can do that way. Um, but I'd rather use these converters, and I'll talk about those a little bit later. Okay. Um, as soon as that... That, that metal gets hot, um, it is open. So the, the theory of the, the, the welter primer is, is that it's supposed to protect between the surfaces. Okay. But my theory on it is how can they say when something gets red hot and then cools back down that it's not going to compromise that primer? In my opinion, it's going to compromise it. You can't say that you're going to get something red hot. And between those two surfaces, you're going to have no, uh, that primer is still going to be, still going to be on the, the surface. It's, to me, it's going to be melt. You're, you're, it just burns it off. And then it makes your welds a lot harder to weld. So some people go, well, I do it right because I use that, whatever. You know, nothing's right, you guys. Nothing's right. And even when they built this car, it's still rusted when they did it, quote unquote, right. So think about that stuff. When you're doing it, there's no, you're, everything's a repair. Everything you do is a repair. And, you know, is it a good repair? Sure. This is a great repair. Will this last? Absolutely. This will last. Um, would I drive it, you know, uh, in, in the winter, in the snow and expect it to last as much as it was when it was new? No, I wouldn't. Um, and, and, and I wouldn't do it with anybody's work. You know, that's just, that's not, not a good idea. So. Okay, so how does the thing that you need to think about is how does rust occur, and how did this happen? How did this whole thing get so rusty? This probably was one of two things: a chip in the paint from the outside, or a compromised material from this one that was actually rusted from the outside. This piece, and uh, the, there was probably some paint where the paint was compromised a little bit, like a little tiny chip in the paint like that. That little surface rust, people say, oh, it's surface rust, no big deal. No, all rust is a big deal. Okay, that little surface rust starts there and it just works its way under the paint. And little by little, it goes under the paint and then it becomes a spot like this over time. And uh, so that's how one, that's one way it comes. Most of the time, rust comes from the inside out or it comes from an area where the paint or surface is compromised. So, between their pinch welds here, okay, the rust, uh, the water gets, gets somehow works its way and gets between those pinch welds, and then it starts to rust from the inside out. And, you know, I always try to use these products to try and push it into the cracks as best I can, and try to get it back in there, um, you know, and, and I'll even thin this stuff even though it says not to. I'll thin this stuff here. And I'll use that. And then once it's got in there and done its job, then I seam seal it in. It's good. That works good. I mean, it really does. So I don't know. The product's not designed for that, but it does work. Thin it a little bit. That it soaks in there really good. And then uh, seam seal it in once you get it all. Or, or open it up if you can. And reseal it. But you're not going to open up every pinch weld. You're just not going to do it. There's nobody, Nobody's going to do all that. You can't. You know, you're not... There's no way anybody can do that. So, uh, so, um, so you, you do what you can do. You do what you can do to these things. You're trying to repair it to make it a good solid car again and do the best you can. 
and you're not going to make it like it was. And even when it was new, it, you know, it wasn't built that well to where um, it will not ever have rust. Because there's, look at all these little holes and galleys and little places for the rust to, you know, gather or the water to gather. Um, it was not designed for, you know, lasting anywhere near this long. So between the layers, you have to think where the rust goes. It goes between the layers. It does all these different things. Um, and, you know, you have to think how that rust. Sorry about that if my memory went away. So I have to start over again. Hopefully um, I don't repeat myself. But if I do, you can always fast forward through it or whatever. So between the two layers um, is where it happens. Um, and, and another way it happens is from the inside out because... And the inside, it only had, if you see right here, there's only primer on there. Around the edges, there's paint. So that's that primer that they dipped the car in. So it's really, really thin. And it's easily to get easy to get compromised. And again, between the layers uh, of metal, it, it, um, it lasted. So I, like I said, between those layers, I try and take some of that product and I'll thin it down and I'll shove it into as much, as much as I can in between those cracks. Try to get it to stop rusting there and once it's once and so i've had people that say that that it's better to use the gel that removes the rust you know listen that stuff just makes you feel better all right let's talk about what this stuff does right here this is actually there's a there's like i think two different i've read this before i don't remember the exact names so if i get them wrong i, I i'm not a chemist okay so but this one here uses, I believe, tannic, tannic acid. And tannic acid uh, takes iron oxide, which is rust, okay, and turns it to iron uh, tannic oxide. So, uh, and tannic oxide, I think that's the, the chemical balance it is, whatever. I'm not a chemist, but I know what works. Okay, it actually converts that rust. Look at right here converts it to something that can't rust so guys say oh that doesn't work and that stuff doesn't you know it just covers over it products that cover over it are ones that say encapsulates rust okay does that stop rust no this stuff chemically stops the rust from happening it it it, it can't rust that that black stuff cannot rust okay it's not a rust it's not it's not uh iron oxide anymore so it chemically stops it from working. And, and, and so I, I get people that say, oh, well, you just cover over it. You know, uh, stuff like hammerite, that covers over it. Um, it just actually, as they say, encapsulate rust. I, 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 used, I used to use those kind of products many, many, many years ago. And I stopped using them because of that. Um, then there's uh, Pore 15. Pore 15 is good and it works good. Um, they use a similar, I, I think there's two different chemical balances that actually do the same thing for the rust that actually chemically stop it. I think it's phosphoric acid and tannic acid. Um, somebody can always make that in the comments. Uh, tell everybody exactly what it is if you want to know. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't care. I just know it works. So, um, and that work mixes better with oil-based. That's a, actually a water-based product. Okay, so they have water-based rust preventive stuff and they have an oil-based one. So, and they use different, I think, different chemicals that do the same type of thing. So, POR15, a lot of guys like that one. Um, the, the reason I don't use the POR15, I'll tell you, um, is, is it basically, um, it, because it's a paint, all right? Primer, you can get more, uh, because you're not really trying to make something that's protected. You're trying to just primer it, and then you put your protection over the primer, um, primer, they can put more uh, chemical in there because they're not trying to make it completely 100% protected um, stuff. And that those this stuff is designed to be painted over. So um, you can actually get more of the chemical in there. Um, and that's why, you know, I'd say Pore 15 is a little bit better than, um, than, than Rust-Oleum. But Rust-Oleum still has the same type of thing in it. They use... Um, that, that same acid in with the paint and that actually helps to stop the rust and, and actually kill it. 
the same way that this chemically, the way that this does, but there's less of that chemical in there. So, and because it's paint, it can't really get underneath some of these things where when you thin that stuff down, it can do that a little bit better. So that's what I do. Um, and you know, so the other thing is, is, uh, let's talk about things that, uh, that you can't do. And, and a lot of guys that say, oh, well, I do mine all at the seam. So, man, everything's right. I paint it behind. You know, when you, as soon as you hit that welder on there, guess what happens? You know, opens it up again. It, it, no matter how you do it. All right. I, I think that there's no foolproof way to do it. It's just doing the best you can to try and keep the car from rusting again. Um, so the other thing that, 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 that you know, that, that you can't do is when you get new parts, let's say, just look at one. Classic Fab makes great material. Um, like their stuff. I, I would use it more if it was, so if it was cost effective. I mean, these are nice and heavy steel. Um, same thing with Wolfsburg West. Their stuff is really good. Um, some of the others are not as quite, quite as good as the, theirs are. I mean, Wolfsburg West has their own. There's also the ones from Europe. You guys do a fantastic job making metal. Um, I was kind of bitching about the fact that they didn't put um, some kind of primer on it. Now they do. Thank you for that. If you're listening to my video before. But, um, and, and this is why. Because a lot of guys just weld on the stuff raw. And they don't do anything here. You know, and, you know, there you go. It's going to rust again. Unless, and like I said, keep it inside. Always, no matter what you do, keep it inside. Don't try and not drive and drive it you can drive in the rain every once in a while but just don't do it all the time you know keep it from getting wet keep it dry you know that's the best way to protect it so in here inside here these things are spray painted okay and, and inside these little holes and stuff um it maybe these are dipped i don't know these I, I looked at them before i remember one of them i looked at had voids in the material in here and there's nothing you can do about that we are not going to take every part and go dip it. And then when you go to weld it in, right, guess what? You know, on the back side of here where you welded it, it got hot. You know, now it's it's an accelerant, you know. Heat and and uh, salt are accelerants for rust. So, salty day, man. You're just asking for trouble. So, uh, you know you're not going to get paint back in all these corners because like I said, it was dipped um, uh, uh, even on the new metal. And when you go to put it on, you're never, and you spray paint everything. You're going to spray paint all this. Are you going to get paint behind here? No, you're not going to, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, are you going to get paint between the metal? No, you can't. As people say, well, that's when you use, well, you weld through primer. Well, as soon as you get it hot and you weld it, that area of it is, hot and it's probably open again i i don't know how they could possibly say that that stuff works for that okay all it does is protect the inside of it on the areas where it's not welded and maybe that helps a little but not really because the welds are going to the part, first part that's going to fail and that's usually what happens if you look at how that rust occurs on this the pinch welds start to come away because the you know and the and it starts to get loose and then more water gets in and then you know you just have to look at how that happens and you realize how to make it stop the best you can. And like I said, you are doing a repair. You're not going to make it new again. It's never going to be. And even when it was new, like I said, it still didn't last. So, you know, garage is your best bet. So anyway, um, but you have to think about how that it got in there, how, you know, what happened, and then try to get it to not happen by, by, uh, so like a lot of times I'll spray, let's take a spray can of the, the spray cans of the rust reformer. I'll spray can up in here as far as I can. And that has a little bit of protectant on it. And that probably would replicate what's here, that primer. So that would help a little bit. Um, you know, I'll take spray cans of paint, you know, and spray can up inside here, like even back behind here. Um, that's going to get painted because there's a hole right there to spray back in there. I'll try and, uh, I'll put some of that, more of that, uh, stuff in there. I reach in there with a brush. And get that, I actually reached in here with a brush where there was a hole. And uh, then there's a hole down inside. And I'll spray inside there. They actually have spray cans. You can buy a nozzle on it. 
and you can take it's, a, it's called a 360 degree nozzle and you can put it on a spray can you can shove it in holes like you can shove it in that hole there you can shove it in little holes everywhere you can and you can spray um, they actually have at Home Depot they have a red red oxide primer that's really really good it's actually a pretty good sealer and it actually has on it, it, it doesn't have the spray nozzle on it, but it's actually, uh, it's, it has a big stop sign on it. If you look for that one, uh, that stuff works really well. You could spray that in all the holes and everything. But then again, those things are not, you know, uh, made for cars. So they're, they're, they're not made for automotive paint. So when you, if you do put it on the outside of here and you try to put automotive paint over it, it might wrinkle. There's all kinds of issues with that, but it's great for your frame, your things in the underneath. You know, you can use that type of thing to stop your rust from happening, and it's very effective. I've, I've tested those primers for over 10 years on exterior, and they work. I've tested this stuff, same thing. 10 years, no rust. It, it does work. So, you know, I, 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 you know, there's no way to actually guarantee it's not going to happen, except for if you keep it inside and just keep the moisture from. See, what happens is there's some moisture that gets in there. You don't let the moisture ever to get in there anymore, and you, and you've, uh, and you treated it and you stopped it as best you can. You know, and you treated it and you stopped it the best you can. Um, and that's why I say those rust gels they don't help to kind of go between the layers. They'll just, you know, you'll, you'll remove what's on the surface, what you're seeing right here. Okay. But we did, you know, if you use the rust converter or reformer, it, it, it can, it, you can put runs in here or whatever. You can thin it down with a brush as we were doing the other day and shove it into all the cracks and it'll help to get between those two layers to stop the rust from, to chemically stop it at least. And then when you seal it and paint it and put seam sealer on a lot of it, then You've got a you got a fighting chance, you know. You, that's all we're doing. We're giving this thing a fighting chance, giving it a chance to go again. Uh, it's going to be a classic now. It's not going to be you know something somebody's going to drive. I mean, if this ends up with Robert, he'll drive it daily, and that's okay. But I know he takes care of his stuff. He'll rinse it off if he ever gets uh, water. You know, he's going to do all the things that this person probably didn't do on this van back when they owned it. And, you know, he's going to rinse it off if it gets rust. You know, if it gets uh, water on, he won't take it in the bad weather. He'll just park it, you know. He'll camp in it. He'll say, well, I'm not driving today. It's too wet, you know. So, um, but, yeah, this, you know, that's what you're trying to do. You, you, you want to shove, like, like this, this whole nose, you know, behind here is what happened. You know, this rusted from the inside out. So, you look at the rust and let the rust tell you, how it came and now how am I going to get it to go away I'm going to do what I can to prevent it from happening so what I'm going to do on this of course is rust it out I'm going to cut this off and uh, cut this nose I don't know if this nose is going to come off I'll see if that's pin hold it's coming off the bottom of that will come off and I'll just make this piece right here what I'll do is make this piece and I'll lay another piece over it drill a hole in it so it so the water can drain and then uh, it, and, and then I'll replace you know, I'll, I'll behind here I'll actually treat all that area and I'll treat up as far as I can reach up behind here and try to get it to stop you know to get it chemically to be neutral so anyway you know uh, so those are kind of how some of the things work what they are um, what I've researched you know and and listen you can listen to what I'm saying or you can do your own research that's fine. I'm just opening the door for you to think for yourself. I'm not trying to, you know, do the thinking for you. Um, you need to do your own thinking. You need to think about what, how the rust occurred on your vehicle because it's going to be different than this one. There, you know, I love it when somebody says, "Oh, it's all in the usual places." It's like there's never a usual place on the bus. It's always different. Every single one of them is a little different. I mean, yeah, floors and stuff like that are pretty common, but this stuff here it's random you know I mean usually these things rust this one's not so you know every van depending on where it was sitting is different you know every car 
I mean, it depends on what you're doing. It doesn't matter. You know, like my Nova, my Nova, my Nova Super Smart Convertible was worse probably than this car. You know, worse. And I didn't have patch panels or anything, and I kind of made everything. So I, I needed to redo that car because when I did it, um, I had no no money. So of course I made a lot of stuff and I put the Bondo on too thick, and uh, of course uh, it came back and got me in the ass, right? So I put it on really, I put it on pretty darn thick on that car. I was in a big hurry. I did it in a month. I just got divorced and I ran through. I said, you know what? I'm I'm gonna be driving another convertible. I had to sell my, well, I had to sell a, uh, I had a convertible. What's it called? Uh, Corvair. And uh, I had to sell that. And uh, she, you know, I was part of the divorce. I was like, yep, yeah, fine, whatever, you know. And then uh, I went in. Uh, but I had the Nova sitting there. She goes, oh, you can have that. I go, oh, okay, cool. I'll, take, I'll keep that car. And I, in a month, I was driving that car. <laughs> I did all this rust repair, and I was driving it in a month. So, yeah, I did a little too fast. And, yeah, it cr the wanted to crack because I got it on too thick. So, that happens. You know, so I, I didn't have the quarter panels. I should have just cut them off and did them, you know. Yeah, but I didn't have the money to buy all that stuff at the time. So, I just made it. Made it as best I could, and, and some of it, I had no sheet metal bit. I had nothing. I did it all with that pair of duckbill pliers. Where are they? Right there. Yep, same pair. All right. Harbor Freight Tools. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. I uh, hope I got everything in there, uh, and, and I hope some of the stuff helps you think for yourself on what you're trying to do with your rust and try to make it go away. And... Don't beat yourself up if you're not 100% successful because there is no 100% fix forever except to keep it inside. If you keep it inside, it's probably not going to rust anymore. Talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.